to see, what to rent, and what to skip. It's Movie Reviews with Ryan J. All right, so nation normally, nationally, <laughs> normally the nationally syndicated Ryan J tells us which movies to see, rent, or skip. But today, these films are all must-sees, mm -hmm. if only to see how they influenced our generations and other generations in different ways. I love this. Yeah, right. fine. Yeah, it's kind of different. Yeah. yeah. It's different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start breaking them down, starting with the three eyes. What do you say the three eyes well, are? Well, I use the three eyes in choosing the movies that we're going to talk about today. Okay. So they are impressive, iconic, influential. They're impressive like because they're all super entertaining films, iconic because they represent a generation, mm -hmm. and then influential because they sort of um, shaped the generation that they represent. Yeah, gotcha. whether it's style or the, right. the lingo mm -hmm. or whatever else. The way else. we treat people, the way we think of ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's start with the 80s, because I got to know what movie you picked from the 80s and, and what, what types of characters we see in this movie. I mean, the 80s was like Spielberg's, you know, <laughs> yeah. decade, right, with E.T. and uh, Indiana Jones, but I chose something from 1985. This year is the 30th anniversary of The Breakfast Club. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's a good you one. You got to. Yeah, and okay. so good. You know, written and directed by John Hughes, and he is iconic unto himself. He also did 16 Candles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and this was a movie that really made us think about identity, who people perceive us yeah. as versus who we know we actually are mm -hmm. in high school. Yep. You know, it's I very love true. that. Mm -hmm. um, what other? Um, wasn't there a movie recently that referred to it? Or there, there is a Pitch Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there, was, there was a great song, Don't Forget About Me, at the end of Pitch Perfect. So that kind of you know, st hammered in how iconic it actually is. And if we look at the characters in this, there are types of characters in high yeah. school. You know, there's the jock, there's the pretty girl, there's the rebel, there's the brainiac, there's mm -hmm. the introvert. And so we all kind of identified with one of these characters. And that's who they represented in each in their school. But when you got to know them all, this movie, you know, peeled back the layers to their onions, so to speak. And they had so much more in common than, than we really give credit for. And I think it's like a, almost like a metaphor for life. It's true. Everybody everybody loves it. I don't know anybody that doesn't love that movie. Right. Mm -hmm. It's great. So good. Okay, so how about the 90s? Let's move on to the 90s. Yes, and this was also a really, really big decade. You know, you had everything from Toy Story, which changed animation, right. to Schindler's List, you know. But uh, 1995, this year's the 20th anniversary of Clueless. Oh, yep. absolutely. Yes. Yep. So good. Loved that movie. favorite thing about this movie is the costumes. Costume designer Mona May, and she came out with those plaid skirts. You know, the 90s were all about grunge. Loved those plaid skirts. You know, the the high sandals, socks. right? High socks. But, you know, we, everybody at school, you know, I was in college at the time, but people were wearing, you know, the baggy pants and mm -hmm. everything else. But these girls came out so high stylized. And this is a movie that's sort of a precursor to Sex in the City. This was a, a, a film where the costumes were another character yeah. in the movie. And they really, you know, represented who these people were. And our clothing really became a part of our identity. Yeah. Who were the breakout stars from that? Well, of course, it's Alicia Silverstone, oh, yes. but she doesn't work as much as like Paul Rudd does, who played yeah. you know, her stepbrother. And how cute was he? This is Paul Rudd before he was really Paul Rudd action star. Who did star. not fall in love with him in that movie? I That's, did. Uh, of yeah. course. So in cute. Love. So sweet. Mm -hmm. And then also Brittany Murphy, gone too soon, but True. she was great. She was the makeover. You know, this movie was loosely based on Emma, My Jane accent. Austen's Emma. Yeah, and she had a makeover scene. We always love a great makeover in a movie. So this was yep. transformative that way. And there were some really great quotes True. in this movie. Right? Give us one. You, you, as if. <laughs> yeah. As if. Everybody or, said um, as if. She's a full on Monet. Yeah. We know what, someone, <laughs> what that means. Um, surfing the crimson wave. Uh -huh. time of the month. And then it was also when we came oh. up with this. Do you remember this? Whatever. Yeah, that's right. You know? Yes. That's from Clueless. <laughs> That's so, wild. And my 16-year-old daughter, it's her favorite movie. As well, it should be. So it lasts so long, you know? I right. mean, that's what I think is cool about it. What Absolutely. about the 2000s? 2000s were a little more difficult because it's so so recent, but there was one franchise in the 2000s that really crossed all generations and okay. broke all demographics from 2001 to 2011, all eight films of the Harry Potter series. Yeah. You oh. know, just so brilliant. I love these movies, and not just because of the magic and the effect, and how great they are, but it returned people to reading. This this yeah. series was credited as these movies as bringing kids back to reading. I've, I've never seen spoke. one of those movies. What? I haven't either. Not a single one. I know. I'm it's out. amazing we're even <laughs> friends, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's amazing. No. No. Seriously. How Why do you think possible? so many people love it? Why do you think it spoke to so many generations? Because well, it wasn't just kids. Right. I mean, right. there were adults who were like geeking out over it, like you. And every demographic. You're total geeking out. I, I am in my, my room. It's why I'm single. <laughs> I know. But, uh, <laughs> 
you know? That was the vibe. <laughs> exactly. But it's, it's because it's not just about magic yeah. and all of, magic was the device to tell a story about love. You know, it's really about friendship and family and love and the ultimate, you know, good versus evil story. Yeah. And so that's why I think it speaks to everyone. We have less than a minute, so oh. we got to run. Romantic movies, anything you want to say there? I just like that there's, you know, romantic dramas oh, and romantic the comedies. The I Notebook the Notebook. Taught us how to stay committed and how to, you know, keep our love true. And then when it comes to romantic comedies, When Harry Met Sally yes. was iconic because... Of it, that dinner scene? That dinner scene in the <laughs> diner, yeah. right? That was hilarious. Yep. I'll have what she's having, yeah. you know? Yep. We could forget that. But also, it, it ruined us for the holiday of New Year's Eve because yeah. who wants to be a single? or alone now on New Year's Eve, it also teaches you to marry your best friend yeah. instead of, you know, the infatuation of the month. The oh, hot guy. Love right, that. Right. Okay, and do we hit the drama, the dramatic? Yeah, the notebook. The notebook, I just wanted okay. To say. And what yeah. I love about the notebook is that, you know, it really made you think about the relationship that if you didn't have, that you want to have, and, mm -hmm. and the importance of commitment and true love and staying and together. Longevity. And longevity. Yeah. Into old age, mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you don't think about in early love. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Blu-ray giveaway, something you want to mention about that? I do have that? a giveaway, just, you know, in theme with, it's the... Uh, uh, Heather's on Blu-ray. I've never which seen that. You no. should see it. It's the movie that you, there would be no Mean Girls if not for Heather's. What genre is it? It's um, it's a com it's a dark comedy. Okay. But it's really ahead of its time. It's rated R and it's a high school film, but it's very rated R. Like you can't even say any quotes on the air from this movie. They're oh. all hilarious, but Whoa. they're so R-rated. So rated. how can people but win it? Enter to win it at my website. And okay. it's the movie that like the Breakfast Club should have been. You know what I mean? Okay. okay. So, I like that. So go to RyanJReviews.com. You can like him on Facebook, follow him on Twitter. And for his full movie reviews, check out that website, RyanJReviews.com. You're the best. Oh, I love that. That was fun to talk Sorry, about. Sorry, baby. Don't. Have, we haven't watched Harry Potter. We're going to yeah. have to. All right. We're all I'm going to zip you up for a weekend and just Rainy play days. all eight movies. Rainy oh. weekend. <laughs> that seems like a long weekend. No, no, You're no, going to love it. You're going to love it. <laughs> Life's changing. Yeah. changing. I promise. <laughs> Thanks anyway, a lot, Ryan. Thank you too. Good stuff.